Hey there, welcome back. Today we are going to wrap up the work that we started a while ago when we started talking about the three keys to teaching your children the faith. I'm Nancy from Catholic Sprouts and I hope you've been enjoying these videos. So far we've talked about how prayer is the most important key to teaching our children the faith. Next, having a profound sense of trust. And today we are finally going to get into actually teaching. But today we're going to talk about some concrete things, some ideas that will really help you come up with creative, fun, and hopefully effective ways to teach our children the faith. But I want to ground everything we're talking about today in the words of St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Remember, my friends, we are not called to be successful, but we are called to be faithful. So many of the things that you do to try to teach your children the faith, they will unfortunately flop. They just will. Things will never be as successful as we had hoped. And yet, like Mother Teresa tells us, we are called to get up and try again tomorrow. So let's break this down. What are the key things that we need to try when we are teaching our children the faith? Well, I've broken this down into three major categories, and I want you to keep in mind that if you are homeschooling your children, a lot of this is going to come from the curriculum that you choose, and that's great. Find a beautiful curriculum. There are many of them out there. Ask around. Find the best one. But what we're talking about more is like creating the environment for learning, not necessarily the specific resources to use. I'll recommend some of those, but actually finding the resources is not the hard part. Setting up the environment for learning and excitement and growth, that can be the hard part. So first let's talk about how we create situations where we can learn with our children. Now, as you might know as a parent, standing and giving a lecture to your children on a virtue or a saint is probably the least effective way to teach them. They probably won't absorb much of it and they probably will act like a child and rebel against it. I have found it is much better to sit and listen to my children and have beautiful conversations that can come out of an activity that we are doing together. One of my favorite things to do with my children is to color. I have a couple of girls and even boys that love to color. I use a set of Catholic coloring pages that I made for my own children, but I would love to send them to you for free as well. You can find the link below this video. Anyways, they are they are coloring pages to teach them the ABCs. Now, if you look online, there's tons of coloring pages out there for the ABCs and just tons of resources on ABC, learning the ABCs. But I thought, what a cool opportunity to teach them about the faith. You know, even if it's kind of a more in-depth, complicated term, we can talk about it. We can color it. And so what I do is I print off a couple sets of these coloring pages and I color a set with my children. So even the baby, I'll put even a set in front of them and we're all coloring the same letter together. We talk about it and what's, what's always surprised me is that my children have the best questions. Sometimes they're goofy, but sometimes they just are really beautiful. And sometimes I have to say to them, I don't know the answer to that question. And so in a private moment, I go find catechism, we look it up, and we learn it together. And that is such a fun thing. Children are never disappointed when you say you don't know as long as they see in you a determination to find the answer for them. And so that can be a really beautiful opportunity to learn with your children. If you would like this free set of coloring pages, once again, I would be overjoyed to send them to you. Just follow the link below. The other way that I like to learn with my children or have kind of an organic learning together experience is by reading things aloud with them. Now, my oldest is seven years old, so he's not quite to the point where he can read a full book all by himself. So we still do lots of read alouds. But I remember even growing up, I loved being read to, even when I was older, and I still love audiobooks. 
There's something really intimate about listening to a book being read to you. And so we have, we read all through the Narnia series, which I encourage you to do as well. And there are so many beautiful things in there. I mean, fun, fantastical things as well. But beautiful things that can really pull out the truths of our Catholic faith. And so we read those aloud and discussed them. We've also read a couple different versions of children's Bibles. And just reading a little section of that, discussing about it, has, has really led to some beautiful conversations. And sometimes we don't have anything to discuss. Sometimes we just read it and enjoy that together. And that's good too. All right, next, when it comes to teaching your children the faith, something that I've learned the hard way is that it's a lot of work to come up with a new idea for each day when you're teaching your children. It is much smarter to simply find something that is ongoing and daily that you can use with them, especially if you establish it at a certain time and you make it part of your family's routine. Now, I particularly love this in Lent and Advent. We use the Jesse Tree Daily Devotional in Advent, and I have a book for that that really walks you through each day. I'll link through that. No planning on mom's part. We just sit down and do it and have a beautiful experience. Because I love that so much, I actually created a Jesus Tree Devotional that we use for the 40 days of Lent. Same thing. No planning, no stress. Pick up the book. Find the resources that you printed on day one and enjoy. Have a beautiful experience. So I love those times. But for all of the other days, and even the days of Advent and Lent, I also like to have something that I can use every day that I don't have to plan, but that can really just be turned on or plugged into and be beautiful. Now, for this reason, I created the Catholic Sprouts Daily Podcast for kids. It's just five minutes. You turn it on. I turn it on on my phone while we're eating breakfast. It talks about the liturgical season or virtue or another key aspect of our Catholic faith. Each week is themed. Each day is only five minutes. My kids love it, and we always have something to talk about afterwards. So I love that. I just love having things where I don't have to put a ton of planning or work or buy supplies for a craft. Ooh, I'm over that. But just something where I can turn it on, we can have a beautiful moment, and hopefully a beautiful conversation afterward. So the last thing I wanted to talk about today is just creating an environment, creating a home where faith, faith can flourish in our children. As I mentioned, if you're a homeschooling parent, please put time into finding a good curriculum. I know that you will. There's a lot of good ones out there. But we all know that whether we homeschool or not, our direct instruction time with our children is pretty limited. And there's a lot of other time where things can happen naturally or organically, and a lot can depend on the home that we have created for our children. And if that home is clearly faith focused. So I just want to give you some simple things to think about. You know, just evaluate like how much silence there is in your home. Is there time for a child to really maybe begin contemplative prayer to find God in the silence? Does silence exist? Turn off the TV, turn off the radio, turn off whatever it might be. And just, you know, it's hard. Our kids like to be entertained as much as we do. But really evaluate if there is time and space for silence in your home. Also evaluate how you have your home decorated. Are there things that can draw our children into the beauty of our faith and the beauty of our God naturally? Do you have art or words that can just naturally inspire them to lift their eyes and their mind to God? This can be very simple. It doesn't have to be a huge redo of your old home, but just simply being intentional about allowing your child to see those things can be a pretty powerful decision. Also, you know, and this is something that I was inspired by the parents of St. Therese, Zelie and Louis Martin, they would make a habit each night of sitting down with their children in, in not an organized way, but just something they did after supper. And of course, at that time, there weren't as many distractions like phones and TVs, but they would just sit around and talk about God. 
talk about the faith, talk about the spiritual journey. And you can imagine how amazing that must have been with all of those saints sitting around. But we can do this in our own homes too. We can make time in the evening when the TV's off, when the homework's done, when the dishes are done, or maybe we'll do them later. But just a little bit of time at night where we can talk about God. Maybe we're talking about people we love. Maybe we're explaining what happens after death. Maybe we're simply talking about the good things that happened that day, the good and the bad things, and talking about how God was there. That can be a simple thing, but it can be a powerful thing. And the more our children see us naturally thinking and talking about God, the more they too will naturally think and talk about God. Finally, something I want you to think about is just think about the things that you have around for your children to grab to do on their own. It's a beautiful thing when children get to the age where they can grab a coloring book for themselves or pull out the perler beads and start working on a project all on their own. These things are amazing and we should have some things ready for them that are kind of part of the faith, not just part of our secular pop culture. You know, maybe find some Catholic coloring pages, or you can print some free Catholic coloring pages online. Find those and replace those princess, Star Wars, superhero coloring books with Catholic coloring books, so that when they decide it's time to color all on their own, they have those things to look at. Also, you know, if your kids are really into perler beads or cross stitch, there are lots of Catholic patterns that you can have available to them that that can be really fun. I, for example, created, um, like not all, but many of the Catholic saints in cross stitch or for perler bead. And my children just enjoy doing those things on their own. And they naturally have questions that lead them into a deeper faith. So just think about what are the things around our house that children can grab and do on their own? And could I replace those with similar things that are Catholic or Christian or faith-filled? And so friends, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this gave you some ideas to try. So I'll be back soon with more ideas to help you and things that I found helpful in my own journey as a Catholic parent. Tune in for those. But until then, I encourage you to join me in the work of parenting as a Catholic, which is essentially doing small things with great love. I will see you soon.